Hello YouTube, this is Chelsea from STEM APKs. Welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through the installation, building, and compilation of Leptonica. The Leptonica library is one of those uh, dependencies that is essential if you're going to be doing uh, object uh, character recognition using Tesseract. Uh, and also, if you're going to be doing some tracking and text uh, recognition using OpenCV. In some instances, you will need Leptonica and you will need uh, um, a version that, it, that is working and is proper configured. And the reason I say that is because you have many choices, but the problem is that being the Tesseract uses Leptonica uh, and it's, it's essential for it, you need to make sure that they are compatible. So you got to make sure these guys are compatible with one another. And it tells you here if you're using 1204, which ones you can use. If you're using 1404, which one you can use, 1604, and so on. In my case, I'm building the latest Tesseract. So it, it uses the latest Leptonica. It's 1.74.1. It's actually not zero, it's one. And in order for you to have the latest, you need to pay the price, which is you must build it from source. And uh, that's why I made this tutorial is for those people that have to build it from source. So let's get started. I did a little page here uh, to keep me uh, in, in check here. And these are all the dependencies that you need, being that, you, that it comes with an auto tools uh, configuring environment, you will need the auto tools and you will need, these are all auto tools that you will need. So you need to install them using your package manager. You also need these libraries, you need the package config, you need libjpeg, you need all of those. There's no way around it, nothing will work. These, very important, I found that out the hard way. Uh, if you're going to test, make sure that to test Leptonica before you go on and, and install Tesseract, you need this in order to create the containers to, uh, to contain the images for testing purposes. So I would recommend if you want to follow along that you also have this installed. This, don't worry about it. Uh, only if you need it if you don't need it, don't install it because it might break some other stuff. Um, I'm going to probably take it out of there. But uh, if there are times that I, I believe to use this one, they needed a version of it. But um, just in case, I put it there just in case. But be careful with it because it will, might break other stuff. Uh, so we all, how to get it. Let's find out how to get it. You can either go here to the source page and then just copy the link address, open a terminal, and then do we get, and then copy and paste. That's one way. Hit enter and it's going to extract, it's going to bring the, the tarball and then you use tar XBF to extract it. You know how to do all that. The other way to do it is just use git. And if you wanna if you wanna use git, you have to install git. So just go up git. I actually I should put but should include it in the libraries. So it will be there. So just clear and now just go git clone and then clone the latest from Dan Bloomberg's git here. And where is it? It's right here. HTTPS, GitHub. And that will be the latest. And he also has a private package that you can also get. But this is should be good enough. That's what I did. Okay. So you can clone it. It, it uh, downloads the directory. And now you're going to get a directory that looks similar to mine, but not the same because mine is already configured. So you will not have a lot of stuff here. Uh, you might not have some of these guys yet. You're not going to have some of that stuff. So don't worry about it. I'm going to show you how to get it. Before I say that, 
Uh, I know it's crowded. I know it's very crowded. If you don't want it that crowded, I skip this step. You can use build inside the build instead of to configure inside the build. So that way it's not as crowded. I'll show you how to do that. But if you want to just do it the way I did it, let's do it together. Every time I use auto tools, I like to use which should be a V. Uh, I use auto reconf to begin with. So install, so it installs in a verbose way. That's what the V stands for. Uh, all of the dependencies and some of the stuff that it may need. Um, I like to do that. You don't have to, you don't have to do auto reconf. You can just go to auto build. And then after you auto build, then if you want to configure inside the build, like I said, just go two dots for the top directory and go configure and hit enter. And you can configure inside the build directory. If you want to do it the way I have it, the messy way, you're going to be in this whoa. I, I forgot how mine is built already. Sorry about that, guys. I thought it was going to be a small tree. <laughs> so just if you want to just do it, make sure that you're in that this, the top directory or the source directory, the one with the source file. Okay, and then just instead of two dots, you know how to do this, but just in case you don't know, and just hit configure. And it's going to configure. Once it configures, hopefully everything went well. If you have a hard time configuring, just make sure you go here to this page and read me and make sure you come to this page right here. If you're running into trouble, he does a pretty good job on, on here. If you're using autoconf, is this, you will use this right here. If you're using CMake, which you can, you can do it that way, or if customize, it's a whole different other thing. And if you're using AutoConf, make sure you read that. If you run into trouble, hopefully you don't run into trouble. Everything is fine, so yeah, but the chances are that you will be missing something. So just just don't don't panic. Just satisfy the requirements and it will take care of it. And once you're here, so now you already configure, we already built, we already did all that. So now we're going to do this. Very important here, especially for Ubuntu users. You can go either auto or you can go local. If you go local, you can just do make for local here. And, but if you want to do make for auto, you I recommend that you use uh, sudo and give yourself super user privileges because you will need them. You might need them. In my case, I needed them. In order to open other files during the make and install phase, it crashed and it was just because of permission. So just in order to avoid that, just put sudo make on it. And as you, as you know, the Ubuntu system has its own way of installing certain libraries. Some Linux distributions use a different file system. They use a local, uh, use a local lib ubuntu you have to let them know what is in use of local lib so you got to do that extra step i don't know if it's all debian systems but i know that you have to for ubuntu which is can be a pain sometimes because sometimes you forget but once you're done we we'll make for auto you do sudo make and it's gonna take hit enter and it's gonna take about 15 minutes more or less 20 minutes maybe 10 and hopefully everything goes well here you're gonna see everything being built and then after you do that then you go sudo make install 
and is going to install it in your system, whether it's local or whether it's auto. The hopefully everything went well. So now we gotta make sure that the libraries are linked and everything is fine. But just in case something went wrong, you can enter this. If you lo look at here, he has it down here also. This is the things that can go wrong right here. And I included it here just in case you need it. Hopefully you don't have to do it. I didn't have to do it, but just in case it's there. And make sure you go into this file here and make sure it's found here. It's in that directory and you're going to find libc.conf. Make sure you put this inside of it. Okay. And then you can also do it this way and then do sudo ld config to make sure that you save these steps. And now, hopefully everything went well and now we're ready to test it. So let's go and test it. And I have a directory here called testing. I have some page, uh, things. Uh, the old headers, header file, if you see this guy, you might need it. So all you need to do is going to be, it's right there in that says source file. If you go there, you're going to find it there. Let me see to make sure. And there it is. Okay. If uh, I think uh, it comes with it already, if not, there's a way to also to get it here. If you want also another one to extract uh, prototypes, you can do that. But you don't have to. That's optional. But the old headers one, you do that one. You do need just in case it's not there. Just follow along, and it will tell you how to get it. It should be there though. So where am I? All right, let's see the testing. And let me clear this. LS. And right now, so this is the header file that we're going to be using. We're going to be using this file right here. Nothing fancy. All it does, let me show you. Nothing fancy. It's a C file. All it does is is going to ch display uh, an image. That's all it's going to do using Leptonica. And to run it, I already ran it, but I'm going to remove it so you know how to do it. So let's just remove it. I just removed the binary, so now it's not there anymore. I created a, a, a nice little simple file, make file, just to, this is only for testing purposes to make sure that the, that Leptonica is installed, everything is working. Just do the copy this into your, into a make file and, uh, and run it. Okay, so we're going to do it now. Nothing is a C preprocessor flags. In one of my tutorials, I have it uh, how to use an alternative to CMake. It's the same thing. Nothing that you haven't seen before. The libraries, linking the libraries. So let's close that. It's just simple, so you don't have to do it the long way through other tools. And now you got your make file. You got you got your source file. So all you need to do is make and then the name of the binary that you want to create. And it's giving you a warning, which is fine, as long as it's not an error. And you're going to see the binary there. And now we run the binary with the name of the image that you want to show. And I was working with uh, two bits and four bit images, so there's not much color in this image, but it, it, 
brings the point across. And there it is, your coffee bean image. And if everything went well, you should be seeing the same thing I'm seeing. Um, I hope you like this tutorial. This is the end of this tutorial. If you have any questions, you should leave them in the comments box. Uh, if you like this tutorial, please click the like box and subscribe to my channel. Follow me on GitHub and Twitter and have a great day. Thanks for watching.